It's a classic staple of 1980s sci-fi cinema, produced as a parable of uncontrolled American consumerism. Yet the film asks one important question, what would you sacrifice to have a bigger house or a nicer car? Yes, we're talking about They Live, and this is Science 5. They Live was based on a short story called 8 o'clock in the morning, written by Ray Nelson in 1963 for the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. The film itself was mostly written by John Carpenter under the pseudonym of Frank Armitage, which was directly inspired not only by the then President Ronald Reagan's questionable economic policies, dubbed as Reaganomics, but also the increased commercialization of America, which was focused on getting people to continually buy products, even if it wasn't in their best interest to do so. The film's protagonist is the softly spoken character Nada whose name is derived from the original short story's George Nada, even though it is never mentioned on screen. It's interesting to note that the name Nada actually means nothing, so in effect he's just a general man on a street, i.e. he could be any one of us. The story of the film focuses on Nada arriving in Los Angeles looking for work, and it's here he inadvertently stumbles across the realization that aliens not only inhabit and control the Earth, but in the process they, through hidden and subliminal messaging, encourage the humans to buy and consume more. This is because it's the aliens who not only control businesses and corporations, but they have a vested interest in ensuring the economy contributes to the never-ending cycle of worshipping greed. Alien involvement notwithstanding, Ultimately, the film's core message is about unrestrained capitalism, which includes the vast division between the haves and the have-nots, which has been an ever-present issue in America and other Western societies. In addition, the film features not only an emphasis on looking out for number one at the expense of everyone else, but it also contains a poignant message about how the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. As a key example, the film highlights an actual real-life issue whereby a large corporation will give upper management massive bonuses whilst laying off lower-end workers. Furthermore, there is also the scenario of when the poor suddenly become rich, which in the film is represented by humans openly siding with the aliens to improve their wealth and social status. Ultimately, these humans are content to allow aliens to control the world if it means a better and more comfortable life for themselves. A fact demonstrated within the film when an unnamed destitute drifter becomes a willing collaborator once he realises the massive financial gains he will obtain. On the contrasting side though are the people who are rebelling against the alien takeover and what it stands for. In the context of the film, these people are the heroes of the story because it's they who are standing up for human rights and to rid the world of the invasive alien presence. However, there's a valid argument to suggest that some might be against what they're seeing because they themselves are not on the receiving end of all this wealth and prosperity, especially when their own lives are a struggle living below the poverty line. Ultimately, the aliens' goal is to conquer the planet, especially as they actively initiate global warming to suit their environment. Once again, life is imitating art as environmental issues, particularly with global temperatures rising, are still relevant even today. In the end, the film was not a success at the box office, which is somewhat ironic considering the film's story was about making money. But its cult status remains firmly intact, with a loyal fan base constantly echoing the film's core sentiment and memorable quotes. Overall though, the film may be a little on the slow side, and perhaps the music doesn't really fit all the on-screen action. Plus, it's clear to see Roddy Piper was never going to win an Oscar for acting. But regardless of these minor shortfalls, the film is a quintessential John Carpenter classic which will appeal to anyone who not only watches it with the right mindset, but actually gets it. Finally, the most amusing aspect of the film is it could easily be real, especially today. Aliens could indeed be living among us, controlling the marketing and promotional aspect of the internet where ads and commercials continually pop up in our browsers, encouraging us to buy more with money we don't have especially as physical cash itself is being phased out for the online alternative to not only ensure more spending, but to boost company profits with those pesky hidden charges. Whilst the warming of the planet is actually a genuine environmental issue. So yes, this could all be happening right now. All that's missing are for the scientists to discover the aliens' hidden signals and for us to buy the sunglasses with money we don't have just so we can expose them. See you next time on the next Sci-Fi Spective.